Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this third week of the Offscreen Film Festival. Mike and I are very happy that we can present to you tonight uh, one of our favorite Lovecraft adaptations of all time, and that is Stuart Gordon's Dagon, a film released in 2001. <coughs> The screening ties into our homage to H.P. Lovecraft, a writer uh, and also a father of cosmic horror. If you enjoy this film, then definitely come back on Friday and Saturday for two more um, adaptations of H.P. Lovecraft by Stuart Gordon from Beyond and Reanimator. Uh, this weekend, we also have uh, other Lovecraftian films on the program. We have Necronomicon with actor Jeffrey Coombs in the role of Lovecraft himself. We have Absentia, an early and very creepy movie by Mike Flanagan. He's uh, yeah, the, one of the, the people behind um, Doctor Sleep, for instance, and Gerald's Game. And we have also one of John Carpenter's best in the mouth of madness. But before we dive into tonight's main feature, we also have a little extra for you, a Lovecraftian short film from Belgium called An Eldritch Place, and its director is with us tonight. Please welcome Julien Jonio. Hi, so uh, my name is Julian. I made uh, An Eldritch Place uh, a few uh, years ago now. And uh, the main uh, reason I made it, it was uh, uh, back when I took part in a sleep deprivation experiment. And the rules were simple. We couldn't go on Facebook or MySpace or anything. We had to stay awake and have our mind focused. So I, I tried to think of uh, a few short films I did. And I got back to... Uh, H.P. Lovecraft, because uh, one of my favorite uh, short stories is Dagon. And I cannot spoil it uh, why I know, but there is one shot or two shots in the movie. You will see uh, why it's very uh, inspired by Dagon. Uh, it's, I think it's the money shot. Uh, but I would like to thank uh, Offscreen to screen it. And also the Proteus Workshop, who did the special effects that you will see at some point in the movie. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Julian. I'm also, uh, okay. Sorry, uh, I'm also selling some uh, DVDs over there. <laughs> so uh, after the movie, uh, you can check it out. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Julian. Um, so Stuart Gordon is the premier director of Lovecraft films, and it is because of his excellent output in this department. Uh, from 1985 to 1995, he made three Lovecraftian films, Reanimator, From Beyond, and Castle Freak. Um, fans of Lovecraft, like myself, and fans of Stuart Gordon, also like myself, would, uh, in these years after 1995, dreamed that he would return to the genre and do another Lovecraft movie. And not only did he return to it, but he did um, what is considered by most to be the best is in terms of its Lovecraftian interpretation. And that's the movie that we're going to see tonight, Dagon. Um, it was produced in um, the year 2000. However, it had a much earlier conception. Um, actually, directly after Reanimator in 1985, Stuart Gordon and writer Dennis Paoli worked up this adaptation of Lovecraft's work couldn't get funding for it, and it was shelved for so many years later until 2000 when they were able to put some money into it. Um, and it was planned, although uh, it doesn't star them now, it was originally planned as another vehicle for Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton. Although the movie is called Dagon, only a very small part of it is actually based on the short story Dagon by H.P. Lovecraft, which is only six pages long. The beginning with the shipwreck and the storm comes from Dagon, but from then on, the movie mainly ventures into an adaptation of another uh, Lovecraft story, which is The Shadow Over Innsmouth. 
Um, the fictional village where this movie is set is called Imboca, which is uh, a, literal, a literal Spanish translation for Innsmouth. Uh, which is not a coincidence because uh, it was a Spanish production uh, made by uh, the famous production company Fantastic Factory. Dagon was filmed in a Spanish village called Combaro, which is located in Galicia, um, only six kilometers away from the famous town of Pontevedra. While the look of Combaro was, of course, the main reason why this village was cho chosen as the location, the pagan heritage of Galicia and the presence of the route towards uh, Santiago de Compostela were also a main part. Uh, this is also a particularly witchy area of Spain, and um, many shops in Combaro sell uh, dolls, um, that look like witches, for example. For a filming location, it could get hardly more Lovecraftian than this one. Um, now, because the films that Stuart Gordon made were commercial films, um, it was uh, desirable for them to put a romance into the narrative. Now, it's extremely humorous if you've read any of the Lovecraft stories because there is no romance to be found. Uh, Lovecraft was not at all concerned with having uh, characters that would fall in love and be, live happily ever after. In fact, he avoided it completely. Um, so Reanimator, uh, From Beyond, and Castle Freak, they kind of shoehorn in these characters that often don't even exist in the stories themselves, where it's an attractive female lead and an attractive male lead, and they're either, the movie is causing a problem in which they cannot be together or which they cannot stay together. Um, what is extremely satisfying about Dagon is unique even amongst Lovecraft films, and that is that uh, screenwriter Dennis Paoli and Stuart Gordon managed to conceive of a very Lovecraftian version of what a romance story might be. Um, I assume that not all of you have seen the film, so I'm not going to spoil it, but um, you'll find out indeed that it is extremely strange and perverse. Many people here may not know yet that the creature Dagon is actually based on a real god. It was the main god of the Philistines, half man, half fish, who originated as a fertility god in northwest Semitic Mesopotamia. His name is tied to an old Semitic word for grain, which is, of course, a symbol for fertility. Dagon even uh, found its way into Christianity. The habit of not eating fish on Fridays, for example, comes from Dagon. And where do you think the fish symbol from early Christianity comes from? Indeed. Um, now, Dagon is also, amongst the Lovecraft films, probably the most non-stop. It has a breakneck pace that you could, in my opinion, the first thing I thought of when I saw this movie was something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Once it starts, it does not let up. Now, in fact, Lovecraft stories are not often that way. They're very brooding and, and have a lot of narration. Um, however, the story Shadow Over Innsmouth in its second half is in fact Lovecraft doing action. Things are happening constantly, people are being chased, and it does not let up. Um, producer Brian Yuzna was particularly proud of this film. Uh, he, in fact, has been very candid about his feelings after it screened originally, after it played film festivals and its original release. He was underwhelmed by the response. He was extremely proud of it creatively and he was extremely proud of it in terms of being a Lovecraft movie. Uh, but he has quoted, been quoted as saying, this movie got no love. This movie got no love. Um, now, he also hypothesized what might happen 20 years later. He wondered, perhaps an audience will grow for this film over time. I would say, I think I can speak for both Vanessa and I, that we are dedicated fans of this movie, and now that it is 20 years later, it is high time to drum up the fan base that this movie deserves. An excellent Lovecraftian adaptation, Stuart Gordon's Dagon. Woo!